like the gold devil. I'm daredevil. Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and Daredevil is back, baby! My uh, ass remains unwhooped. So, Matt Murdock made his official MCU debut in Spider-Man No Way Home, but in the penultimate of She-Hulk, we got to see him as Daredevil, as well as the rematch that we've all been waiting for, Daredevil v. Hallway. <laughs> This episode gave us a lot of answers in regards to who this Matt Murdock slash Daredevil is, as well as an understanding of the Daredevil Netflix series place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So let's take a look at the references that we got in the Netflix series, future projects that Daredevil may show up in, and the plot and overall feel that we're going to get in Daredevil's new series, Daredevil Born Again, which will be part of the MCU's Phase 5. So, in Episode 8 of She-Hulk, we hear a reference to Matt's law practice in New York, more specifically in Hell's Kitchen. Well, I run my uh, practice in Hell's Kitchen, and we mostly do pro bono work. When he says, we, this is without a doubt a reference to his longtime law partner in both the Netflix series and in the comics, Foggy Nelson. My name is Matt Murdock. This is my associate, Foggy Nelson. Do you mind if we sit down? She gave a vague shrug. I said we go with it. Matt mentions their pro bono work, bills piling up, and occasionally taking on big clients to help keep the lights on. These are all things that we've seen happen in the Netflix series. Because we're not sure we can afford even this palace unless we make some changes to our current clientele policy. We're never going to be able to keep the lights on waiting on a horde of innocent souls to stumble into our loving arms. Guess our finances haven't improved since last week. Now, when She-Hulk learns of Daredevil, Matt seems surprised that she doesn't even know who he is. Are you like a superhero? Like the gold devil? I'm Daredevil. implying that Matt has been doing this for a while and he thought that he would be like a known quantity. But in a world full of superheroes, it's not surprising that a vigilante like Daredevil may not make much news outside of Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, but giant green monsters fighting in the streets of Harlem, aliens invading Manhattan and, and Grimace snapping away half the universe, a guy dressed up as a devil with a couple sticks wouldn't really stand out. Exactly, and actually speaking of aliens invading New York in the first Avengers movie, we've seen that referenced in the show Daredevil several times. This office was barely touched by the incident, which is why it's on the market already. The uh, incident, is that what we're calling it now? Well, it sounds so much better than death and destruction raining from the sky, nearly wiping Hell's Kitchen off the map. So the showrunners always intended for Daredevil to be taking place in the MCU. Oh, but Kevin Feige didn't. True, but more on that in just a bit. So when Daredevil says, I'm Daredevil, you can hear the theme music from his Netflix series begin to play. Now, this to me says that the MCU fully intends on canonizing as much as possible from that series into the MCU. They want fans to be able to watch that show and enjoy it as part of this character's history. So, like we've theorized before, we think that the Netflix series is canon to the MCU Daredevil, except for like when there's a contradiction to what they have planned. Anytime there's something that happens in the MCU that contradicts what happens in the Netflix shows, the MCU proper shows and movies will take precedence. What is MCU proper? Good question, Doug. MCU proper is anything overseen by Kevin Feige directly. Kevin Feige was and is the shepherd of the MCU. But there was a time when Feige was not in charge of the Marvel TV division. Not said that right now. That's right. The TV shows fell under the purview of Ike Perlmutter. I hate that guy. Perlmutter was president of Marvel the company, and it's no secret that he and Kevin Feige did not get along, which already put a stress on the cooperation between the TV shows and the movies. And after Feige was promoted above Perlmutter, he no longer had to report to him, and thank God. Instead, Feige now reported directly to the chairman of Walt Disney Studios, which at the time was Alan Horn. This drove the wedge between the MCU and the Marvel shows even further apart. So like the Netflix series skewed off into a variant timeline from the MCU, and this rift between Feige and Perlmutter in our universe was an interdimensional fourth wall breaking event caused by the multiverse going into madness after the death of He Who Remains. Wow, man, that's a really good video idea. Thanks, I'm here all week. Now, despite Kevin Feige not having control over the Daredevil show, its showrunner still did a phenomenal job. You could argue that Daredevil is the best Marvel series to date. It's a fan favorite and Kevin Feige knows that. Now, to borrow from Doug's theory, I do think that the Netflix series may be set in an alternate timeline. So when we say that the Daredevil series is canon to an extent, you can think of it like a variant timeline like the ones that we've seen in the show Loki. And this timeline is very similar to the MCU's 
use Daredevil timeline, maybe even identical for the most part. So close that you can watch the Netflix shows as part of the MCU canon. But when there is an occasional contradiction here and there that doesn't quite add up, us hardcore fans can write that off as a slight difference in the grand calculus of the multiverse. In She-Hulk, Matt's all happy and funny, and in the Netflix series, he was all sad and brooding. <laughs> Is one of the slight multiversal differences that the MCU Matt takes antidepressants? Well, buddy, that's not exactly true. There are plenty of times in the Netflix shows where Matt was happy, smiling, even cracking jokes. I'll never be able to thank you enough for it. You're not gonna kiss me. Nelson and Murdoch. Avocados at law. <laughs> Like we mentioned in our She-Hulk Easter egg video, Matt was in a good place in the final scene of the Netflix series. He was happy. So it's likely that Matt is just in a really good place right now. Maybe he heard that Kingpin was blinded in Hawkeye. Ooh, burn, high five. Now, to any fans who were bothered by Daredevil's walk of shame because you're worried that they're not taking him seriously, just relax. Heisenberg says, relax. This was Daredevil in She-Hulk. Yeah, he was. Doug. Sorry. This was Daredevil in the She-Hulk show, a light-hearted comedy. So of course, they showcased the more light-hearted and comedic side of the character. But in his new series, Born Again, I can promise you, it will stay true to the dark and gritty nature of those first three seasons. And I mean, you can't do Born Again justice without it being dark. In short, Frank Miller's Born Again was heavy. This is really heavy. A heroin-addicted Kevin Page sells Matt's identity to get her fix. And then, when Kingpin learns that Daredevil is Matt Murdock, he blows up his brownstone. He gets him disbarred and basically wrecks his entire life. Matt is then faced with the struggle of digging his way out of poverty, reclaiming the Daredevil mantle, and taking down the Kingpin. Now, while the Daredevil Born Again title is a reference to the comic of the same name, and a meta-reference to the fact that Daredevil is back in a new and different way, we think there may be another reason this season will be called Born Again. We think that Daredevil blipped. So right now, huh? And we've actually theorized on this before in this video. But now having learned more following his She-Hulk appearance, we got more to say. In She-Hulk, we hear Matt say, uh, Luke Jacobson made a couple of new suits for me, so I owed him one. A hint that Daredevil has had a suit before, likely the suit that Melvin Potter made for him. Now, it's possible that Melvin Potter is still in prison or has been released but is no longer in the super suit game, which is why Matt reached out to Luke. But the question then becomes, why is Matt in need of a new suit? Well, what if he blipped while he wasn't in his Daredevil costume? And then, five years later, when he blipped back, he, like many others, found himself displaced. When I blipped back to my apartment, the family that was living there was very confused. The wife thought that I was a mistress. The grandma thought that I was a ghost. It was, it was, it was, it was really a mess. Over those five years, his apartment was surely rented out to someone else, and his suit could have been thrown out or even sold in an underground auction like we saw in Hawkeye. Heard want to live in that apartment with the giant light-up billboard shining through the window. Maybe the kingpin, since he's probably blind now. Oh, call back to my joke from earlier. High five. And now that I think about it, remember in season three, Matt's suit was being worn by Poindexter's Bullseye, who was posing as Daredevil. And Matt had gone back to his classic suit from season one. After beating the hell out of Kingpin, Matt leaves and Poindexter is still there, lying on the ground in the Daredevil costume. Meaning that Matt probably never got that suit back, and it's likely in the possession of the police. And like we said, Matt's suit maker, Melvin Potter, had been arrested by this point. So this new yellow suit is likely Matt's first suit since he lost that one from season three. Now, back to the blip. With the chaos of the blip, we theorize that Kingpin may have escaped prison, and with the only hero that seemed to pay him any attention, Daredevil, being dusted. Kingpin likely flourished and was able to begin rebuilding his empire. So imagine how enraged he's going to be when he learns that the Devil of Hell's Kitchen has returned. I'm gonna kill you! And imagine how furious Matt will be to learn that Wilson Fisk has yet again gotten out of prison. <laughs> This is the perfect setup for another face-off between Daredevil and the Kingpin. Again? Isn't that a little tired? Can't we bring in someone else like the Jester, the Owl, or the Stilt Man? Stilt Man? <laughs> I said what I said. I'll admit that the Daredevil versus Kingpin dynamic is a little played out, and that for Born Again, it needs to be something new, something different, and I think it will be. And I mean, come on, can you really have too much Vincent D'Onofrio? <laughs> Now, before the Born Again series premieres, we will most certainly be seeing both Daredevil and Kingpin appear in the Echo series. 
we've seen the relationship between Echo and Kingpin touched on in Hawkeye. So the Echo series will definitely follow up on that and then introduce us to the relationship between Echo and Matt. How would they communicate? He's blind and she is deaf. Probably with some form of tactile signing. What's that? Well, it's sign language, but with touching. Oh, so you mean they're gonna- Yep, I mean they did date in the comics, so it's likely there will be at least some flirtatious tension between them. Well, what about after his series? What's next? Is he like gonna be an Avenger now? Well, I think it's safe to say that we're gonna get a few seasons of this new Daredevil show. Apart from that, we know that Kevin Feige has grouped Daredevil and Spider-Man into the same street-level category of the MCU. We've got the street level with our announcement of Daredevil, and of course Spidey going into the street level uh, heroes. So hopefully we'll get to see that team up before Sony crushes our hopes and dreams and takes Spider-Man back completely. <laughs> Another place that I think we could see him pop up is in Captain America New World Order. It's looking like this film may focus on the Superhero Registration Act, with Matt's mention of the Sokovia Accords in She-Hulk. May I remind you that the Sokovia Accords have been repealed. This could be a tease that he'll be in the legal fight of stopping the Registration Act. And of course, I think we'll see him join the fight in the Avengers Kang Dynasty and in Avengers Secret Wars. So do you think the Netflix series is canon, semi-canon, or not canon at all? And what do you hope to see from the MCU's Daredevil going forward? Let me know in the comments below, or you can at me me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.